Hello there, it's Sandy, and today I've got a little Bible journaling page that has some kind of funny stories that go with it. My pastor was preaching last weekend and told a story in the context of preaching about Acts that I've brought into a different verse, but the story was just a little snippet of it was really powerful for me. He was talking about how afraid we are of things that we don't really have need to be afraid of. Like, for instance, he used the example of being sitting on the deck, like being outside with all your family and you're enjoying yourselves and somebody says, I see a mouse. And immediately everybody screams, their feet go up and nobody wants to touch a toe on the ground for fear of what the mouse is going to come out and bite you in the toes. Like what is really going to happen here? That mouse is more likely to run away from you. That mouse is tiny. But we give the mouse a megaphone, even though the fear is completely irrational. We know that that mouse cannot do anything. And he was equating that in some ways to the devil. When we talk about the devil as being this, you know, super powerful being that, you know, he's, he's just someone to fear. Instead of realizing that de the devil is defeated, he's already lost. He's in the death throes. He's trying to throw a monkey wrench in any, everything. But he is a mouse with a megaphone. That's what he is. And to recognize the, the enemy for what he is, is really important. So we don't give more eyeballs, more thought, more of our attention to him than he deserves, which is nothing. He deserves nothing. He is the devil. Instead, we need to turn our eyes to Jesus and realize what he's done, claim the victory that he has already won for us. There is no need to focus our attention on the devil, aside from just saying, step back, you lost, and be done with it. And that for me was, was powerful. I was also reminded when he was telling his mouse story of a mouse story that I had when I lived in New York, we had these cats. They weren't my cats, but we lived right next to a railroad tracks and the cats were always, you know, killing mice and things. That's what cats do. And one time the cat brought in a mouse and occasionally they would do that. They would usually be half dead mice. It was kind of gross. But this one particular time the cat brought in a mouse that was alive and was pregnant and the, he did not kill the mouse. And we did not know what he did with it, but it was running around somewhere. And, you know, we were kind of used to it. It was weird and creepy, but okay, it was fine. I was on the ground floor. I was renting a room in the house and I heard some scampering up and down, like the cat was running up and down the hallway, like just madly back and forth. And I opened my bedroom door to see what it was. And the babies had been born to this mouse and they were running up and down the hallway and the cat was trying to catch them all and kill them all. <laughs> And I screamed my full head off. Not that a little, you know, eighth of an inch size little thing is going to do anything to me, but I freaked out. I absolutely freaked out. My little mice had megaphones. And that's what we do with our fears. We allow our fears, whether it's of the devil or of anything else, we allow those fears to dis dissuade us from having faith in God. We let it take us away from keeping our eyes on the Lord and what he can do. But in the sermon, I was really grateful for this mouse with a megaphone idea that my pastor talked about because it gave me a way to journal this verse about Satan being the father of lies. I've wanted to journal something about that because I need to remember that's who he is he is a defeated liar, but I didn't want to draw him in my Bible. <laughs> that just seemed wrong. I just, you know, there's some people that have journaled this verse and they've drawn him in there and I don't want him in my Bible, but I put him in here as a mouse. He is a mouse with a megaphone and that is all. So I am using some colored pencils to do this, a little bit of white pen I didn't like where I put the white pen in some area, so you can go over white pen and it basically scrapes the white gel pen off the surface of the colored pencil, so you can remove some of that. And there we go. There's my little mouse. I'll just give him a little ground under his feet. 
And my tiny little addition to my Bible is complete. I hope this was helpful to you and that you will be able to resist the devil not by giving him credibility for the things that he thinks he can do, but by giving him the boot because that is all he deserves. Absolutely. Go out and have a blessed week. I will see you again next Sunday with another Bible journaling video, hopefully mouseless. See you later.